by Liesl Shirtliff, read by Ruth Wilson. Chapter 12, The Miller's Lie. Give me the gold in your hands, said King Barf. The miller stepped in front of me and gave me a warning look. The gold is mine, your majesty, he blurted. Yours, said the king and I in unison, but nobody seemed to notice me just then. I asked the boy to bring it. He's my servant. Come here, boy, quick, bring the rest, he snapped. I didn't move. What trick was he playing? He would certainly be punished for hiding gold. Why would he risk his neck for me? Move, boy! Excuse him, your majesty. He's a half-wit. Doesn't know his own name. The miller laughed and his big belly jiggled. No, said the king. Give the gold to me. All of it. I tried to move, but my legs grew roots into the ground. My tongue swelled and my brain fuzzed. I don't know why I said it, but the words just spilled out. What will you give me? I covered my mouth and everyone gasped. The air grew still and cold. King Barf moved his horse so close to me that the tip of his sword was level with my nose. Give me the gold and I will spare your life, said the king, his nasal voice now quiet and dangerous. Slowly, trembling, I held out the gold to King Barf and he snatched it from me. He examined the skein and then he opened the bundle and stared inside for a long time. Finally, he pulled out another spool of thread. He stretched the gold in his beefy hands and moved it back and forth watching it gleam in the sunlight. How is this done? King Barf asked, holding out the gold to the miller. I had become invisible again. Well, see, your majesty, tis a strange business, full of mystery and, and, and magic. The king stiffened. Not many people tolerated magic, and King Barf not at all. He didn't like anything that might have more power than he did. Not the witchy kind, said the miller quickly, a good kind. Magic that makes good things. You see, my daughter here, she's not just a beauty, she's talented too. Spins with a touch of magic. She can spin straw into gold. My mouth dropped and so did Opal's. Her blank face became horrified. She looked from her father to the king, back and forth her tongue whipping out again and again. King Barf didn't even glance at Opal. He simply held the gold up to the sun, turned it so it caught the light, and smiled. I have heard of those who can spin more than just wool or cotton. I've never seen it. Show me. Oh, but you see her work in your hands, said the miller. Show me this spinning. Show me how she turns it into gold. Oh, well, the miller laughed nervously, as if he hadn't expected this. That's part of the magic, your majesty. Not even I have seen her do it. And she does it right in my own house. But mark me, you give her a pile of straw, a room full of straw, and the next morning she spun it to gold. Tis a marvel. The miller gave me the tiniest glance, and then, We can spin you more this very evening. King Bar finally looked at Opal and appraised her. Open, Opal stood frozen and pale. Not even her tongue flicked out. She was so pretty. I might have believed she really could spin straw to gold. But I knew that she couldn't. And so did she. Opal began to tremble. Why have I not heard of your mar daughter's marvelous gift before? Asked King Barf. Such talents would bring me great pleasure and would be rewarded openly if I did not think it was deceitful, if I did not think you were trying to steal from me. The miller blithered, oh, no, oh, no your majesty, uh, ye yes, your majesty, of course, no, no, yes, not to worry, we mend no deception. We are humble, honest servants, we live only to serve. My daughter has just discovered this gift. It is something that has grown with her, grown with her beauty. We merely brought the gold for trading to make sure it would hold its value, to know that it was real so that we might present a tribute to you 
and know that the girl gold was worthy of you, your majesty, never to deceive you, your majesty. The king waved over one of his soldiers to come forth and issued a command in his ear. The soldier went and stood beside Opal. It pleases me that your daughter should accompany me to my castle, said the king. Opal looked up, her wide eyes full of terror. The miller gasped. Well, I, I, well, yes, twould, twould be an honor, your majesty, but you see, if what you say is true, said King Barf, you and your family and all the mountain shall be rewarded. But if not, the punishment for deceiving the king is severe. Dungeons or death. Opal was pulled up onto a horse and led away with the king's procession. King Barf cradled the bundle of gold like a baby to his chest. He looked back at the miller with a triumphant grin. I couldn't see Opal's face before she disappeared. The miller swayed and his sons gathered around him. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? He buried his face in his hands. I never liked the miller Oswald. He was a liar and a cheat and greedy. It was his fault that his daughter was being led to her doom. But no, that wasn't true. It was my fault. I was the greedy one. I had spun the gold. I had traded the gold. I had fumbled and tripped and spilled the gold. Now Opal was all spun into the mess and she hadn't done anything at all. Poor beautiful Opal. That thought poured icy water over my head. An innocent girl was being led to her doom because of me. A pixie fluttered up to me, shaking her fists and squealing as though she were reprimanding me. The pixie bit my nose, and in a minute it swelled so large I had to breathe through my mouth. Now my nose was bigger than my face. I guess I deserved that. It was still morning, but no one was working in the mines now. Everyone was scattered around the town, buzzing about King Barf and all his soldiers. A gnome ran past my feet and down the road chanting, The king is gone! The king is gone! He took the miller's daughter along! Gran once said there would be times in my life when I would be trapped, with walls all around me too high to climb and no way out. Then I would need someone from outside and above to throw down a rope and pull me up. I believed Gran. I just always thought that she would be the one to throw the rope. I needed help. I needed advice, but I couldn't think of a single person in all the mountain who could help me. Red was mad at me. The miller probably wanted to strangle me. Milk and nothing had nothing to offer. And the magic and the gold had spun me into a bigger heap of trouble than I could have imagined. And that's when I realized who could possibly help. The one person who might be able to give me some answers about my mother and the spinning and the magic. I needed the Witch of the Woods.